If you had to choose between the Godsworn Hunt or Molog's Mob, which expansion would you buy? Hello everyone and welcome back to the Battlecast. I love these videos. I love looking at the new cards coming out with the newest expansions for Warhammer Underworlds. And today we're going to be doing a little bit of a compare and contrast between Molog's Mob and the Godsworn Hunt. And looking at their universal cards, if you had to choose one, which would you choose? Uh, you know, depending on which warband you like to play or even in general. And I actually have to say, I think it's almost a no-brainer in this one, but we'll get to the end. For those who want a quick and dirty, I have a summary of my findings at the end of the video. A link in the description will take you right to that spot, or stick around and get the full details on my thoughts and impressions on these cards. So firstly, we're going to go through the Godsworn Hunt's um, universal objectives. And the first one is called Aggressive Command, and it's for two glory. It says, score this in the end phase if you took the first activation in each round. Whoa. I mean, if you're a lucky person, then this is the card for you, obviously. I don't like that my opponent can just choose to go first one time if they win a roll-off, and then they basically kibosh this card. I do, however, like the fact that there could be a round where they really want to go second, but to deny me this card, they have to go first. And that's a really cool thing that this game does. Uh, mind game. Uh, the next card is Devastation, and it's for two glory, and it's scored in an end phase if your warband takes three or more enemy fighters out of action in a single action phase. And uh, this is a big ask, because three fighters can be two squigs in a grot, or it could be the entire Stormcast roster, and there is a really big difference in difficulty there. The next card is Hoarder, and it's for three glory, and it says score this in the third end phase if you have nine or more unspent glory. Now, how many times has this happened to you? For me, it's happened several, but certainly not, not many. It's a very interesting card for some decks out there, like this fabled Catafran relic deck that's been resurrected from the dead and apparently scores 20 plus glory every game. Well, you know what, maybe this is the one that helps push you over the edge. Uh, but it's definitely a win more card. I do think we might be able to see it come out, especially because your uh, equipable um, upgrades that score you glory will score, um, your keys will score, your other objectives will score, and then you play this card and maybe you can squeak out nine, it's hard to say. Next we have Long Strider, which is a score immediately card for one glory, and it says score this immediately if this is the second time a fighter has made a move action during the current phase. This is basically Games Workshop's way of saying, hey, if you want to run Molog's Mob, well, you gotta buy the Godsworn expansion as well. Ready for Action, of course, can score this, but I mean, it's very often used for that extra attack, and of course there are things like... Um, uh, potion of grace and uh, there's a maybe there's like a leader one or something where you take some there's one where you take a move token off with a ploy magical mastery is a three glory objective that says score this in an end phase if you cast six or more spells in the preceding action phase holy guacamole is that a big ask I mean, if anyone can do it, it's going to be Thedra or the Curse Breakers, as the Curse Breakers have their innate uh, spell that they can cast, which is fairly easy to cast. But that means that either you're doing the Curse Breaker thing and using their innate ability, or you're with Thedra and you've got a mitt full of spells and you have to draw another spell as well. Our powers combined is a score immediately for one glory, and it says... Score this immediately if all your successes, at least two, in an attack or defense role, were support symbols. And this is RNG on top of RNG. I mean, not only do you need the support for them to be counted as successes, but you actually have to roll them, and you can't roll anything else, because if you roll a shield and, you know, or a hammer and two uh, supports, then technically the hammer's a success, so it's not all of them. So it's, it's, it's not good. Peerless Fighter is a score immediately for two glory if there are two or more criticals. Now, I have a friend who scores this 
every game on the first attack and any other attack action for or defense really i mean it doesn't matter the guy crits like it's you know a full-time job uh but it is obviously heavily based on luck you may consider rolling uh running this card if you run a warband or a deck that ro uh, rolls lots of dice i have a garrick's reavers deck that runs lots of dice addition and so it's possible uh, talk about a slap in the face two crits on your attack probably killing them and you get two glory salt in the wounds next we have probably the best objective in this whole set this whole expansion for the god sworn is scorched earth a score immediately for one glory but it says score this immediately if your warband removes an objective token from the field and the curse breakers i think are for sure going to run this card for a few reasons not only is Abazoth's Unmaking a very easy spell to cast, but it will one, inspire them, two, score Harness the Storm, and three, score this card, Scorch the Earth for one glory immediately. What's better is that they can do this in their zone. I mean, they don't need objectives usually, and they are okay with sitting high and tight and just scoring glory. They can do that quite a bit with their uh, current card setup, so auto include for curse breakers no doubt about it and many others i think as well seize the initiative is a score immediately for two glory and let me just tell you that games workshops meme game is on point with this god sworn expansion <laughs> they've got some really crazy cards that you would never run but if you did you'd be a god darn hero anyway you score this immediately when you're rolling to see who goes first and if you roll three criticals and you win the roll off, you score this. So I just think it would be hilarious to start the first round of a game with two glory going in. What's terrible though is that you have to win the roll off. So imagine you've been running this card in your deck for weeks and you finally roll three criticals on a roll off and then buddy rolls three and you tie and you, and you don't actually score it. That's a table flip incoming for sure. Next we're moving on to the gambit cards. The first Gambit card is a spell, and it's called Arcane Recall. And this is the first of this type of card, which is a spell that is requiring a critical to go off. It reads, on a critical, if this spell is cast, you can search your discard pile and take back another spell card. Now, getting a spell back is very strong, as there are some very strong spell cards, but rolling a critical, and, and especially taking up a ploy spot, is it's a big ask, and I don't know if I would do it or not. We've got a card, Ephemeral Form, and this is probably the best ploy card out of the Godsworn set. It says, the first fighter to be chosen by an attack action in the next activation, their defense characteristic changes to two dodges. And let me tell you, this has got so many interesting implications for this card. Firstly, if you've got a one dodge warband, like the Godsworn Hunt or the Sepulchral Guard, now they have two for this attack, so that's already better than what you're starting with. Secondly, if you have shields and somebody has cleave and they're going to come at you, you might as well play this card because your shield is totally ineffective and two dodges beats the hell out of one shield that doesn't even work anyway. Thirdly, if you are charging at somebody who has two shields like Stormspire and you don't have cleave, well, if you play this card, you're actually reducing his success chance by a good margin and that's also good. Next we have a spell card, and this is our second addition into our critical requiring spells, and it is called Razor Maw Swarm. If the spell is cast, you scatter three from the caster, and any fighter caught in that chain suffers two damage. Uh, it's basically like chain lightning, but stronger. We've got another spell, the Sphere of Gul, and it's a pretty cool spell, actually. It says... If it's cast, any fighter within four hexes of the caster who makes an attack action gets plus one dice. It's an easy to cast spell, so I think there's some appeal there. But of note, it says any fighter. So if you cast the spell and for some reason you don't use it right away, uh, you can actually get charged and be hit with an extra dice that you've given to your opponent. So you're a very nice person, but you're probably dead. Now, when it comes to spells that require criticals to go off, there is no better ploy card than Spirit Sacrifice. This reads that your wizard suffers one damage before they attempt to cast a spell, and then they get to roll an extra spell dice when they attempt to cast it. 
This is a persistent effect, so theoretically you don't have to use it right away. It's until they cast a spell or are taken out of action. This might be the ticket that you need to pull off the Razor Moss Swarm or the Arcane uh, Recall. And what's a really interesting combo is that you could, you know, Spirit Sacrifice my turn into Razor Moss Swarm if you really are up in everybody's grill. And this, of course, also helps you cast, you know, the other hard to cast spells like Infinite Riches or. Uh, the other one. Next card we have is Unfocus Blast. And if you cast it with one lightning, which is very easy, then you scatter one three times from your caster's hex. And anybody you catch uh, in the blast, you do one damage. And this is really, really good. I mean, Amis or Rastus can probably cast this because they're wizard level one, and they are usually up in someone's business. Imagine charging in with Amor Serastus, you get your hit off, and then you cast this spell because you do get priority in the power phase and you just finish him off. I mean, it's a pretty good statistical chance, so I think this is a really good card. We're moving on to the upgrades for the Godsworn Hunt, and the first one is Arcane Focus. It's an upgrade that allows you to take an action to give the next spell you cast in this phase a free innate focus. And this is some pretty big implications. So far, the only one who's been able to do so is Zarbag with his uh, Madcap Mushrooms. Warbands like the Eye of the Nine or the Curse Breakers who seem to be able to afford to take non-traditional actions like card actions or drawing power cards or whatever, I think they're really gonna like this card. And there are also some big boy cards out there that require double focus, uh, like Infinite Riches, where you can return you know, a power card to your hand. Next, we have one of our big boys, and that is Arcane Savant. So this is pretty heavy duty when it's applied to Thedra because it requires a wizard level one to apply. And so when you apply this to Thedra, who is uninspired, she inspires, which becomes a level two wizard. And then the savant brings her up to a level three wizard. First of their kind in this game, a level three wizard. You thought it was gonna be Vortimus? I did too. No, it was Thedra from the Godsworn Hunt. I just want to say stick that in your pipe and smoke it to everyone who was poo-pooing the Godsworn Hunt because we all knew that there were going to be some upgrades in this warband that really brought them up to the next level. And I mean, a wizard level three is nothing to scoff at. Next, we have another good upgrade card, which is called the Archer's Focus. So this upgrade reads that a fighter can reroll one dice in an attack action that takes place from range three or more away. And there are definitely a few people out there who are obviously gonna like this card. We're talking about all of the Far Striders and Sanson in particular, uh, but I am thinking about Stormspire, who has a very, very strong uh, ranged attack of three with his spell. This is a great upgrade for Stormspire, who now can roll essentially three spell dice to really, really try and get that double focus to just nail people from afar. Uh, next, we have an upgrade called Disturbing Presence. And I just gotta say, you know, hats off to Games Workshop. Just when you think that they've come up with all the ideas for all the cards, uh, they come up with a really cool card like this, which reads that fighters adjacent to this fighter can't make a charge action. And yes, you might think that, um, well, they'll just hit this fighter instead, but you know what? There are some fighters that you really just don't care if they get hit, like the Horror, who you can summon and you don't really care if it gets hit, because worst case, it just turns into the Ember Horror and no big deal. Next, we have one of the best upgrade cards, period, and that is Tome of Offerings. Whoa, Nelly, whoa, easy there, easy there. This card just gets me a little excited is all. It reads, if this fighter takes an enemy fighter out of action, you gain an additional glory. If you score this once, it's as good as a destiny to meet. If you score it twice, you're laughing. And thrice, well, you dirty dog, you. What's so strong about this card is that before you might have had to have prioritized your leader, Magor or Garrick, to get in there and put themselves at risk to get an extra glory. Well, now you know it's just anyone and their dog who can just go in there and get this extra glory, and it's definitely worth it. So those are all the cards for the Godsworn Hunt. Definitely some strong ones. We'll recap at the end, but now we're moving on to Molog's Mob. Next, we have Digging Deep, which is a one glory card, and it reads, score this in the end phase. If in the preceding action phase, you drew four or more ploy or objective cards. And I really like this card because if you're running a score immediately deck, uh, where you've got lots of score immediately, you probably just get this on its own. However, if you play Duel of Wits, you're halfway there because you've just drawn two power cards. So 
I think this is a really good card. Next we have a card, Envious Acquisition for One Glory, and it reads, score this in an end phase if you are holding an objective that an enemy fighter held at the beginning of the round. And I think this is a cool card because there's also a claim retaken that the dwarves have. So maybe they double up on this and, and you know they use confused priorities or whatever to score it. It just adds a little more consistency if you're going for that playstyle. Next, we have an amazing score immediately card. It's called Get the Hints. Score this immediately if a friendly fighter's attack action drives an enemy fighter back two or more hexes. And, you know, we really should have seen this card coming with the addition of what armor. Uh, this is the knockback equivalent, and it's fantastic. This is a really, really good card. If you've got a knockback fighter in your warband, then this might be for you. The only thing that makes this card a bit worse than... Um, what armor is that technically if you go up and you smash somebody like with uh, inspired dawn guard and you hit them for three and you kill them well then you're not really going to be knocking them back two hexes because they're dead uh, whereas what armor does succeed right away because all it has to do is be successful so it is a little bit trickier um, and furthermore if you do three damage to somebody and you don't kill them do you really want to push them two hexes away where they may be able to run away or something like that so you know it's a very good card but there is a it's slightly harder i think to to use effectively next we have an amazing card keep chopping for two glory it says score this in an end phase if your warband made four or more attack actions in the preceding action phase and hallelujah this is a great card for aggressive warbands i mean we definitely have for both magors and the blood reavers uh, if you make three charges you score uh, an immediately card and basically, there are a lot of warbands out there who would just charge all four times. Charge, 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 round over. Well, now, all you have to do is make attack actions. They don't even have to be successful attack actions. You just have to make them. This is a very, very good card indeed, especially if you have four or more fighters who like to throw down, like Magors, like the Orcs, like Blood Reavers or Godsworn Hunt. Great card. We've got a very cool card, Press the Advantage, which is the antithesis of catching up where you score this in an end phase if you have more glory than your opponent this is a really cool card because there are some more bands out there like the curse breakers who just come out so strong with their glory glory gain it's not uncommon for them to have five or seven glory at the end of the first round furthermore if your opponent lets you go first in the first round then as long as you score some cards and didn't just get the shit kicked out of you you're going to score this card just by virtue of scoring first. You'll have more than them pretty much guaranteed. If catching up is played, which it is, then I would imagine that this card will be played also. Now we're on to the Gambit cards for Molog's Mob. The first up is a Whopper, and this is called Commanding Stride. It says push your leader up to three hexes. They have to end on a starting hex. And sweet baby Jesus, is this card intense. A push three on your leader is insanely strong. Both offensively and defensively, this is a huge win. This push is better than Grimner's base movement stat of two. So talk about really bringing him up to the fight. And you know, if you're trying to run away with uh, Vortimus, you can push him three to the side. I mean, the implications are endless. Uh, very good for Molog, of course. A fantastic card, absolutely fantastic. We have a very interesting spell card here called Quintox Gamble. Again, if you roll a critical when you cast it, you take your discarded power cards and shuffle them together and then draw back one. So it's a way of resetting your deck. And I love the idea that if you are down in the dumps and you desperately need that card, you could theoretically do it. But really, this is a gamble indeed. Next, we have another incredibly powerful Gambit card and this is called Shadowed Step. It says choose a friendly fighter who doesn't have a charge or move token on them and place them on any empty hex in no man's land. They then get a move token placed next to them. At first you might think, you know, is this really that strong? It's kind of a weaker illusory fighter. Well, let me just explain here for a second. If you have an opponent who's playing a defensive warband, which we are seeing quite a bit, and they skew the board so that one of your fighters is basically useless and hanging out in the back, then playing this is incredibly strong as it's going to be way more effective 
uh, than their move would be originally. You bring them right up to the fight. And I think that is invaluable. I've had this happen to me recently uh, in a couple games. Just when you thought the very strong power cards were over, we have another doozy. It is called Transfixing Stare. This says, choose an enemy fighter within two hexes of a friendly fighter and put a move token on them. Oh my God, is this a strong, strong card. Remember that time when you charged somebody and hit them and then knocked them back a space and then they charged you and hit you? Those were the good old days. This card is very strong for a number of reasons. Firstly, if you charge an enemy fighter, hit them, knock them back, then play this card, they're not gonna be able to charge you in retaliation. Secondly, I have had several games where my opponent has been able to run away using things like Hidden Path or Faneway Crystal. No longer. Shut that shit down by charging in, smashing them in the face, then playing this card, and they can no longer run away with Faneway because they have a move token, and they can no longer Hidden Path because they have a move token. <laughs> Next, we have a power card called Whip Into a Frenzy, and this is reminiscent of Blood Offering, where your fighter takes a damage and then they do an extra damage in the next action phase. And I think this definitely has some places to be played. Uh, could be with Molog to kind of inspire him or help inspire him. But more importantly, I think if you play this card and you have my turn, then you can kind of do some shenanigans uh, to really smash somebody home. We're moving on to the upgrades for Molog's Mob. First upgrade we're starting with is an absolute doozy. It is called Bag of Tricks. And let me just say, damn. We have not seen deck searching in Warhammer Underworlds yet. We have it now. In every card game I've played, deck searching is incredibly strong and I think it's gonna be no different here. This has gotta be one of the better upgrade cards in the game. This is especially true for big warbands, like Sepulchral Guard or Eye of the Nine, who sometimes have extra actions kicking around that they don't really need to use, and also uh, an accompaniment of useless fighters to boot. This is so important because having cards like Last Chance or Earthquake or Distraction, when you need them, can be the difference between victory and defeat, and having a card like this where you can pull it is incredibly strong. Next, we have an upgrade called Challenge Seeker, and it says if the fighter makes an attack action that targets somebody that has a higher wound characteristic than them, then they get to roll an extra dice. And this is very cool because firstly, it has no range restriction on it, so ranged attacks can be a little more consistent. But for warbands like the Goblins or Targor and Arnuf or the Godsworn who are generally lower health than a lot of people, uh, this is a pretty consistent card, I think, for a lot of members of that warband. Next, we have a really cool upgrade card called Possessed Weapon, and it reads, after each attack that this fighter makes, with a range of one or two, they suffer a damage, but now their attacks with a range of one or two deal plus one damage. This is interesting because the damage comes after the attack, so unlike Demonic Weapon, where if you have a two health fighter and you equip them with it, they hit your guy once, but if they're going to do it again, they're dying because the damage comes first. So I like this card because... Uh, a two health fighter could theoretically get off two attacks and then they just die after. But you can actually attack with the plus one damage, hit my turn, attack again, and then you're dead. This also might be cool for Molog if he's really trying to get inspired and no one's hitting him if he's playing against a very defensive warband. We have the Tome of Vitality, which is solid and useful. And lastly, we have a very cool upgrade called the Warding Scroll. And it says that after an enemy fighter spell is cast, if this fighter is on the battlefield, you can discard this upgrade and the spell is not cast. And this is very, very strong, especially because you only have to use it if the spell is cast. You can throw it on a useless fighter way in the back that you're not even planning on using this game. And choosing when to shut down a spell after its cast is very valuable because just look at the field, you know, just be like, hmm, what is casting this spell going to benefit my opponent? And then be like, yeah, I think I will cancel it. I think with the general amount of spells we've seen come with both of these expansions, this is a very good card indeed. So when it comes to the question of which one should you buy, if you had to choose, I actually think hands down, no brainer, it's Molog's Mob. They simply have really good objective cards, really, really good Gambit cards, Un not even in the same ballpark Gambit cards. 
and some very good upgrade cards as well. Really quickly for Molag's Mob, I found the objectives to be Digging Deep, which is easy to score, Get the Hence, which is another what armor, Keep Chopping, amazing for aggressive warbands, Press the Advantage if you get ahead in glory, for Gambits they've got Commanding Stride, sweet Jesus, this is something that Grimner's been waiting for, Shadow Step, get that guy in the back up front, Sorcerer's Repost for Stormsire players in particular who want to rebuttal with damage, Transfixing Stare, holy smokes this is an amazing ploy card. For upgrades they have Bag of Tricks, the first deck searching mechanic in the game, Possessed Weapon for those who want to do a little extra damage at the cost of their own health, and Warding Scroll to shut down some spell play. Holy smokes Molag's Mob. For the Godsworn Hunt there was only one objective I thought was super strong and that's Scorched Earth to get rid of an objective token and scored immediately. For Gambits they had Ephemeral Form to give anyone the defensive characteristic of two dodge symbols. For upgrades they have Arcane Focus to gain an innate focus for an action. Arcane Savant, although it really is the most useful for the warband it comes with which is the Godsworn Hunt. Archer's Focus for re-rolling ranged attack actions or even a spell action with Stormsire. Tome of Offerings is really good if you want to get extra glory for kills. And that's it. There are only about six I thought were strong for God's Sworn Hunt, and about 11 I thought were strong for Molog's Mob. So if you had to choose, definitely Molog's Mob. Uh, not to mention the Warband is very uh, new player friendly. Um, but yeah, the God's Sworn Hunt have a couple good things that you'll probably need anyway, but Molog's Mob takes the cake here in a commanding fashion. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. New videos come out every Friday or Saturday. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like or even subscribing to the channel, or you can leave me a comment in the section below. Until next video, I'll see you then. Thanks.